Welcome to another episode of Hambini Fixes Some Other Useless Fucking Shite Submitted from the Bicycle Industry Or some other people might look at it as Here's his next fucking lawsuit Anyway, we digress All the way from Slovenia A chap has sent me his second, not his first because his first was already fucked Second Scott Foil uh, bike frame so he sent me this because he had a few problems with it. So this is a warranty replacement that was given to him from Scott. Um, this came to me and he wanted a Hambini bottom bracket. Let me talk you through the frame and some of the shit that's associated with it. Um, and then we'll get on to fixing it. So this is a Scott foil. It is of carbon construction. And um, I'm not sure which type of Scott foil it is, but in case anyone's wondering, there's the UCI number. It says Scott Foreign Object Damage RD and the number is 42877. Uh, now what always tickles me is the fuck stains that put quality checked. If it was quality checked, it fucking wouldn't be in here, boys. So they haven't done their job properly once again. Um, the badge on this says, um, well, it says a load of shit really, but it says Scott Sports um, made in a tax haven um with their uh bank accounts that just scrounge money from various tax evaders um scott sports main switch oh switzerland and the importer is somewhere in belgium so there you go the frame was made in taiwan i don't believe this is a fake at all because i mean the chap said it was his second frame now <laughs> there's this frame overall when you look at it is very clean there's very very little in terms of um you know scabby bits there's a few little rough bits you know right where the cable hole goes or the i don't know what you call that the cable cover um and where the bearing seats are so that's the the front fork lower and then the front fork upper they're quite clean i mean inside is a bit scabby but um you know in the grand scheme of things that isn't that bad the paint on here is really good. Um, you know, the finish on there is, is really very good. So I would um, you know, say well done for painting it. But unfortunately, you don't get points for painting in here. Now, the usual like tripe they stick on the side, in case this doesn't show up on the camera very well, it says Scott Aerodynamic Science. Well, if you look at this frame sort of in that sort of direction, it's fatter there than it is there. So if anyone thinks that's aerodynamic, then uh, please. Please do uh, do let me know how that that works because it well well that's just basic bullshit. Right, disc bike. Um, I've no idea what these things are for. I've seen a few of them with that. Someone uh, chirp in and tell me what that is all about. There's a few interesting things in this bike. Um, the uh, the the mount, which is usually brazon, it, um, it's actually moulded into the carbon. So this must be glued and then probably fillered and then painted afterwards. Not, not easy to do. Um, this has got disc brakes. I mean, I haven't really, I've tried to remove the minimum amount of packaging from the chap's bike frame because I don't really want to take any more than required. Um, there's the disc um, uh, hole for the, the hydraulic line and these two things, which are the, the mounts for the disc brake. Um, and that's really about it as far as an overview goes. So a fairly clean frame. Now we come on to the sort of crux of it. Looks very nice, but geometrically it's pretty shit. So I only took a couple of measurements, but we'll come to the bottom bracket in a second. But between there and there, um, it's supposed to be on the same plane, um, but it's not, it's slightly on the piss. So I'll show a slide um, explaining that in a minute. So now we come on to why the chap sent it to me. So this bottom bracket on this bike is undersized. So the chap sent it to me and you can see the gauges don't go through. Um, I mean, you can check the other side, but you can take my word for it, they don't go through. He's, he checked it and that's why it's ended up here. So they are undersized um, and they're also slightly oval. What is also slightly more, I'd say, concerning is the outside of this. Uh, if I zoom in, hopefully you'll be able to see it. is very very thin 
um, it's thin there and extremely thin here um, right by where the uh, Q, QA QC sticker is extremely thin and it's not flat so again I'll show you some slides of that um, in a second and uh, it's the same on the other side so that's that's not really all that great um, it's that time of the presentation again sorry the video again it is PowerPoint time and for today's PowerPoint actually before we start today's PowerPoint some people emailed me like I don't know well lots of people emailed me and they said you know are you worried about all of the stuff that happens on the internet when people call you a cunt and all that kind of stuff and the short answer is no I couldn't give a flying fuck it's like it's like the internet is the only thing to a load of people. They don't seem to have a life outside the internet. What happened before there was fucking internet? What happened before there was phones? What happened before there was TV? All that shit. You used to go out and get pissed, laid, and all that kind of stuff. Me, used to lose loads of money in the betting shop. Uh, I still lose loads of money in the betting shop, but there we go. Right. <clears throat> I've outdone myself this time for today's PowerPoint presentation. The roasting of the Swiss Toblerone. Did you notice I went up at the end of the sentence? I was trying to become more Southern fairy-like. Scott Foyle, a first class. There should be a comma in there. Fuck, can I put a comma in there? Fuck. Pen. Wait. Ah, yes, the pen is working. Right, Scott Foyle, where's the fucking pen? shit comma now if i was an nctj journalist which i'm not i would know to put a comma in there but i slightly better than that right scott foyle a first class education in vagina head aerodynamics by hambini aged five and now i have these other little qualifications that i have obtained so I'm an aero sex expert, a part-time rent boy. I like tea rooming on Thursdays. Now, if you don't know what tea rooming is, it's like cottaging. And you can find me on Grinder. My username is Ricky Ramrod from Kublenz, <clears throat> or Ricardo Ramrodo aus Kublenz. Right next, we we'll actually get onto this just good stuff here. Good bit from this frame. Now the paint is really good. All right, I can't really say much more than that. The paint is very good. The tube shape is structurally very good. So it has a high IP and high IXX. Now IP, that is polar moment of inertia. My other part-time hobby is being a gynecologist. Now, we're going to come on to that in a minute. All right, polymer of inertia. Yeah, so that's my doctor handwriting. Um, I've got a fucking family full of doctors. Right. Um, the uh, IXX is the second moment of area. So basically, that is the IP is the resistance to torsion. So to, to highlight that, if we were to get something to be resistant to torsion, it will be like... Mm. If we get my um, stent here, uh, twisting it like that, something with a high IP would be resistant to twisting, okay? So, uh, I'm trying to think of something else. I haven't got anything. Right, have I got a fucking ruler in here? Feel around, rummage around like it's a between. <laughs> oh yes, I've got my Mitutoyo ruler. Right, Mitutoyo rule. Now this uh, illustrates second moment of area. So second moment of area is resistant to bending. So in that direction, you know, I can bend that. But if I turn it round and try and do the same thing, then I can't bend that. And that's because it has a higher second moment of area uh, across there than it does across there. So that the tube, the tube shape on the Scott frame is very good in terms of that. Now the frame is very clean. There's no real void worth mentioning. No excessive birds that you're going to slash your fingers on. Although I managed to somehow. Right. Um, the bad bits. <laughs> the bad bits. This is the second frame. So the chap's first frame was warranty. And he got the second frame, measured it, 
realised there was a problem and then sent it. The aerodynamics are dicey and I will have a slide specific to that. The headset to the bottom bracket and the rest um, of the bike uh, is not perpendicular. Now I don't know what the tolerance limit on that is but you know I'll, I'll explain what that is and then someone can tell me if I'm worrying about nothing or nothing or something or nothing. Now the bottom bracket is um, undersized and its eccentricity is excessive. And fundamentally, this is a 3000 US dollar bike frame. So I'm not trying to compare this to aerospace tolerances. These are just, you know, you get what you pay for. You bought a bike with a bottom bracket that's supposed to be BB86 um, and it's not. Right, the dubious aerodynamics. Now I lifted this from some fuckers in Scott's marketing department. And what we've got here is we've got the round tube which is this one, oh shit, it's pressure sensitive. The aerofoil, and that is not a NACA profile, I can tell you by looking at it, but it's a, a three to one. Okay, most common NACA profile sort of in this um, uh, sort of sizing is a double O to four. Okay, what that means is, it is double O means it's symmetrical because you can get a NACA aerofoil that is like that. If it's like that, which is called camber, oh god, I haven't drawn the line through the cord um, straight there, um, it won't be double O. So the 24 is basically 24%. So the ratio of, um, uh, no, it's not 24%, it's 20%. Uh, it's the thickness to the position of the cord. Yeah. So how far along it is and then how thick it is. But a 0024, so a 0012 is very, very slender, so it's like that. Whereas a 0024 is more like that. Yeah. <laughs> That's how that works. So the 00 just basically means it's symmetrical. Um, and then you've got the Scott foil um, tube shape, which is this one here. Now, I don't know if they've changed it since I lifted this, <laughs> but this is the only thing I could find. And then there was this slide that, um, well, as you can see from the, the HTC Columbia um, uh, marking in the corner there that it is, it is fairly old, but it shows you the Scott Addicts tube, which is basically round, and it's got like a plus plus for light structure, stiffness, and aerodynamic. So it's stiff, so it has a high IP and high um, second moment of area. Um, and then you've got your plasma tube. Now the plasma tube looks very similar to a NACA aerofoil and they've put double plus aerodynamic. This one, the F01, they've said is aerodynamic, stiff and lightweight. So it's it's the summation of all of those, but not quite as good. But it is, it is ropey to say the, the least because I mean, if you look, there's a cliff edge there. So the airflow comes along here, right? And the key to, oh God, it doesn't go like that. Um, the key to, getting anything to be aerodynamic is you want a clean profile that that carries on going if you have an area of nothing what happens is the air air in there will vortex um and the vortexing causes low pressure in there oh bollocks low pressure okay and then you've got high pressure on this side so the net force is that way, so it's slowing you down. On this one, what you've got is, you've got height pressure there, okay? And on here, the area of low pressure is compar comparatively, is only in a smallish area, yeah? So the, um, the delta P, or the delta force, is quite small, so you don't get as much drag. So it, it's, Slightly dubious. This is um, another, I thought this was quite a good one. This this slide I um, got from the University of Waikato in New Zealand. So I'm really big in New Zealand. In fact, I'm big all over the place. And if I was to stand up, you would see how big I was. This is um, an elliptoid, um, but you can see the pressure comes along here, right? And you get skin friction along here. In fact, this is an excellent slide if you're gonna sort of do basic aerodynamics for people, um, and it carries on going. Okay, this point here is called a stagnation point. So the flow velocity at that point is zero, and you cannot have, despite what some people might say, 
um, separation where the velocity is zero. So that's a stagnation point. That one's a stagnation point, and that one is a stagnation point. So the velocity there is zero. If you increase the velocity, you drop the pressure. So along here, the pressure, because the streamlines are, oh yeah, well, I'll pick this one, sorry. Anywhere along where the streamlines are close together, yeah, the flow velocity tends to be higher. And that is how wings work, because if you were to tilt this at a slight angle, like that, you've got loads of streamlines going along the top. Okay, and then along the bottom, you've got comparatively few, and they're spaced out. So you've got high pressure here, low pressure here, and then that's how you generate the lift, because there's a difference in pressure. On the cylinder, the um, pressure is the same on both sides because it's symmetrical. Now, this is another, um, another chart that I got from uh, points or options. This is another, like, uh, you can go on Google and then search for this, but it gives you like common drag coefficients and shapes. So a sphere is 0.47, cubes 0.5, angle cube 0.8. Um, this will be cut long cylinder or short cylinder um, is, is when it's turned effectively. Does that make sense? Um, you can get something called a bluff body, which is like a flat plate. Now the Scott profile looks like that. So that's from their, their website. Um, you can see it's, it's like cut off. So that's where it should be, but they've cut it off and you get well, cliff edge aerodynamics. Now it doesn't take a rocket scientist to work out that you're somewhere between half a sphere and a cone. <laughs> so the drag coefficient between there and there, 0 0.42, 0 0.45, uh, 0 0.5, um, you know, you, you can, quite clearly see that it's uh, gonna be around about, you know, let's call it 0.46 of that ilk versus a uh, streamlined body and 0.04. Admittedly, okay, there are structural differences as well, um, but it's not really an aerodynamic shape. So if trying to say it's an aerodynamic road bike is a bit dubious. Right, planar problems. Now this bike, in an ideal world, so I've got this picture from somewhere, if you drew a straight line through the, the crank or through the, the bike axle, um, the handlebars or the angle of the forks should be 90 degrees. So that angle there should be 90 degrees. Yeah. On this Scott bike, that angle through there is, is off. It's like two degrees. I don't know if that is significant or not, but it's the first bike where I've really seen it uh, as, as pronounced as that. I mean, the seats are conical, so they will self-align to an extent. I mean, two degrees on, um, what's that? 600 mil? What's two degrees on 600 mil? So two sine 600, I better be in radians. Is it 20 mil? It's a 20 mil offset. That's if it does go to the full two degrees. Okay. Now the bottom bracket, the bottom bracket, the required spec <coughs> was supposed to be 40.95 to 41. Um, so that's BB86's spec. Now as found, um, you can see the, uh, that's the drive side, but it's it's not regular. Now you might be thinking, oh, it's, it's all jagged. The problem is I take a measurement from the inside and the outside. So if there's a slight taper on the bottom bracket, you're getting the average. Um, so that's why it's it's not perfect. I mean, it just shows you really how shit it is. <laughs> but, but the headline figure is 40.84 to 40.95 on the drive side. And then this one, 40.83 to 40.85 on the non-drive side. So it is, it is very round, um, but it's extremely undersized. Now, if you were to push a bottom bracket in, um, which with like one of my bottom brackets in, it would probably break it it's that tight and it, it, it is really inexcusable. You should not be getting um, a $3,000 euro bike frame and then having it out of spec because you haven't paid for that. Um, the drive side is also quite thin. Now, the other graph I've got here is the effectively the axial runout. So if, um, actually this is a, 
this is actually a T68 bottom bracket, but if I was to undo this, that is uh, what people would call the face. So now the face run out is how much deflection there is on there. So when you put the, um, the bottom bracket in, that piece there needs to be flat on here. Now on the Scott bike, on the Scott bike, um, there's between 0.8 and 43.65. So there's 0.15 millimeters there or thereabouts. What's that? Six thou, six thousandths of an inch um, of deflection. I mean, it shouldn't be there, really. I mean, look at the um, look at the time. So the time Skylon. Look how well that's made. Okay. Um, the, the reason why it's at forty three and a half is eighty six um, uh, point five plus or minus a bit gives you your forty three and a half. Um, eighty six point five is the nominal width of the shell. So. This one, okay, it's slightly out. I probably let it off that, but it's it's not where you want it really. And the other thing is it needs an offset BB. So if I was to draw where the center point of one is, so let's say that is the center point of the drive side, yeah, the non-drive side is off. So when you um, do the, uh, do the, do the machining, you have to have one side offset. If I show you with this. So this is a T68, but basically this bore on this side has to be compensated downwards compared to the other side. It's a bit different on threaded, but it's that's how it works on a, on a press fit. Right, now we come on to my favorite bit. The Contus Shipbag Scale of Engineering Foot. Uh, let's get the spanner on the end of there. Okay, so that's pretty snug. You can feel that going in. Okay, so that is done. Let's just put a crank in and test it. <laughs> 